you know, you have uh, a, a many choices coming up on November 3rd, unless you're somebody who is doing early voting. Uh, one of the things that uh, are that is going to be on the presidential ballot here in Massachusetts will be two particular ballot questions. No, we're not going to talk about rank choice voting. We're actually going to talk a little bit about question one. Question one is uh, right to repair. Yeah, you're probably saying to yourself, I thought we already did this back in 2012. Well, you did. But there's, you know what, as time goes on, things are updated. Uh, joining us for this particular conversation uh, are two gentlemen who are from the South Shore, who, who know they're, you know, they, they operate family-run businesses, uh, are in the know when it comes to question one. And my, my curiosity is, I see the ads, the ads have been, we've been inundated with the ads when it comes to this particular question. Uh, and that is, is that there are over 1,500 uh, uh, dealers uh, folks that who are you know independent um, auto repair uh, service uh, centers that are uh, uh, yes for question no. So we have Dave Gallarani, who is with the Cape Auto Body and Cape uh, Cape Auto Repair. We also have Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for taking your time not only to uh, to be a part of this this conversation, but even to do a a dry run. Uh, to, to kind of uh, discuss this, you know, and, and better educate me as to where things stand. Uh, we'll start with you, Peter. Peter, you're the one who actually came to me and said, hey, we should have a conversation about this. And I thought it was fantastic. Uh, how does question one affect you and your industry when it comes to auto glass? Well, as you know, Kevin, is, and thanks for having us on tonight. Um, as you know, that the technology now is all attached to the glass. The driver assist cameras are actually attached to the glass. So when a windshield replacement is done, those cameras need to be recalibrated. And for us to access that information, we have to go in through the OBD port uh, to get information on that so that we can do it. Um, one of the things that the, the OE manufacturers are trying to do is restrict that. And with question one, if you vote no, I won't have access to that to do that recalibration. So with us, we're trying to get, we want question one to pass. We were advocates of it the first time that it came around in a different realm of it. Um, back in the day when we supported it then, it was just to get access so that we could reset door windows. The door windows had those automatic up and down. If your fingers got caught, it would stop and go back down. All we needed to be, we, that was the only reason why we needed the access to it so we could reset that when we replaced glass. Now, it, it, as Dave can attest, it's everything is attached to the glass. So for us to replace it and replace it properly, we need access so that we can re recalibrate the system. And, and who is, and if I can ask real quick, and I think when we were chat, we were discussing before uh, starting our conversation here, you had mentioned that this is, this is original. Who, who is this fight against? Is it the the replacement parts versus the manufacturer. Who, who is it? Who is the fight against? It's it's against the OE manufacturer, and I I respect it. I get I understand what they're doing, and what's what the, the what's the acronym for Peter? Peter, what's the acronym? What's the original. What's the uh, for OEM? Yeah. Original, original equipment manufacturer. Okay. That would be a dealership where you buy a vehicle from. Okay. The aspect of it is that. They, they, it's a business decision on their end to capture everything that they sell. So they restrict you when you buy it, that you have to physically bring it back to do it. And it's a business decision. We, a lot of the, every, anything you buy now has some sort of restriction on it to get it repaired. But the problem is, is the OE manufacturers and the dealerships cannot handle all this aspect of it. They can handle it for the first three years, but after that, cars need to be repaired. And with the longevity of the cars being driven, you know, some of these cars are being driven 10, 15, 20 years now because of the longevity of the, the quality of the car. So those needs to be repaired. Excuse me for one second. I don't know why. It, so um, that being... Tiny and Sons, can you hold for a second? Sorry, Kevin. Keep going. All right. So that being said, we need to vote yes on question one so that we can have access to that. 
and we need the access to work on it as an independent uh, auto glass company. Now, Dave, with you, you are you are not only offer auto, automotive repair, but you also do uh, auto body. How does how is, does this affect you? In so many ways. Uh, Peter referred to the assisted driving um, business of the um, of calibrating the cars. So that's something that we just invested a tremendous amount of money. And that right now goes through the OBD port, which is the onboard diagnostic port that was deemed necessary probably 20 years ago. Every car in America is supposed to have an OBD port. Um, and the only company that doesn't have it is Tesla, which is another subject to talk about. But um, what's happened is um, the original law did not account for the pro proliferation of wireless data um, to that OBD port. So now what's happening is they're trying to eliminate the OBD port and put everything to the cloud, which is kind of putting us at a disadvantage as far as getting the information. The information can be gotten in some cases, but it's, it's a much harder process there's more hoops to jump through to get the stuff and there's more, it costs more money to get it. So uh, basically it really comes down to if people want a choice about where they're gonna get their car fixed and uh, who's gonna fix their car, they own the car. So theoretically they own the data. It's you bought the car, you own the data that goes with the car as far as getting the car repaired. But the manufacturers are trying to capture the whole thing. Uh, if you stop and think about it, um, it was probably about 10 years ago that if you bought a new car, all of a sudden Toyota would give you three free oil changes. Now, why did they do that? Because they wanted to get you to come back. Okay. It wasn't because they were being nice guys and they wanted to give you three free oil changes. They wanted to get you to come back. But statistically, uh, and I've talked to, I talked to the Nissan rep not too long ago. We were laughing about how poorly the dealerships do in keeping their customers because they treat them so poorly and they are so expensive and they just do a lot of crazy things. So the bottom line is they're not keeping their customers. And this is one way to keep them because they have no, they'll have no choice about where to go. It's, they're going to have to take it to the dealer because the dealer is going to have the only information. And we find it all the time when people come to us and we'll say, Hey, there's this one thing we can't fix. You got to go to the dealer. And they go, Oh, I don't want to go to the dealer. And uh, it's not only that, they can't handle the work either. As Peter said, um, we recently had um, a Ford that was damaged in an accident. It was a Lincoln and there was a special matrix match that you had to have to do the calibration. And we had not bought them yet. They were like $2,000. So we called Ford up the street and I said, hey, do you have the calibration mats? Can we send this car to you? No, we don't have them. We don't know where they are. We called like four different uh, Ford dealers and one finally said that they would do it, but they couldn't do it for two months. Now, how do I tell my customer that we can't calibrate his car for two months? Am I supposed to keep his car for another two months and have the insurance company pay for a rental? I don't think so. That's not going to happen. So the expediency of repairing the car, if you take the independence out of the mix, uh, you're going to be standing in line waiting to get your car in to get it fixed for one thing. And it's going to cost you twice as much. And I think what is, you know, the word that I've seen when I was reviewing some of the information about the two questions, the word was telematics. Is that what, when you were referring to the cloud, is that what the telematics is? Yeah. So the, the telematics captures the information. And in a lot of cases, you'll be getting uh, emails regularly from your, from your manufacturer telling you when to bring the car in for an oil change and when to bring the car in uh, for brakes and tires and things like that. They, they have it all calculated and figured out and, They've got all your information. So all this mumbo jumbo about, um, you know, they're going to open up Pandora's box here for the independent to uh, rob and steal your, your information is foolishness because they already have your information. So, and unfortunately, anybody that's got a, a, a new uh, iPhone or a phone of that type, uh, they've got your information. They've got you coming and going six ways till Sunday. And so it's really not, a, it's a moot point, really. Um, the scare tactics of having somebody follow you into a, uh, into a dark room and, and uh, you know, attack you or something is, is it possible? Anything's possible, but it's, it's, it's foolishness. It's interesting you say that because if anybody who's ever seen the, the Netflix documentary, Social Dilemma, um, 
my goodness, I've had, how many times have you gentlemen had where you mention something, you look for something, and before you know it, if you're somebody who's on social media, you're seeing ads for that stuff. I've had it where I've mentioned something to a friend, we're talking about it, oh my goodness, there's five different ways to Sunday for me to purchase it through different avenues. So you're right, our, you know, whether it's through our smart devices, whether it's through our looking on, you know, on our smartphones for something, they, they have our data and they're, they're tracking us. We are, we're just basically, you know, uh, Pawns. yeah, we're, well, we're the prey per se, you know, with the, um, but so I'm going to turn my conversation to, to you, Peter. Again, we're speaking with Peter Brown from Penny and Sons Glass and Dave Gallerani from uh, Cape, uh, Cape Auto Services, which entails uh, not only auto repair, but also uh, body, uh, body work as well. Peter, you're somebody who does a lot of work you're somebody who invests a lot of your time in the local uh, um, chamber of commerce. You've, you yourself were uh, the director, or you at least served as the, the president, or have served in such capacity. To what are you hearing from folks like Dave, who uh, you know who are um, concerned about question one? Well, like like Dave, I mean, I service a lot of independents, and and actually, I got an ad going on right now on ATD with one of our, um, you know, Paul Lucchetti from Lucchetti Service Center in Marshfield. And one of the things that we hear through, through our doing work with them is that the question one, they need that, they need us to vote yes on question. And there's five times the independence than there are dealers. And if they get, if they get, uh, if they don't get access to that information, there's a lot of people that are either going to go out of business or it's going to cost a lot more to get your car replaced or I mean repaired because they're going to have to have access to the, they're going to have to drop cars at the dealerships to get these cars recalibrated or reinitialized, even if they do the repairs. So, and like, uh, like I was saying before is one of the hugest things that I've seen this year, we're talking about the campaign that's going on. I've never seen a dealership put a sign out front for anything or any kind of uh, support for anything. And you're seeing them with the question, the vote no on question one. And there's a reason. And, and I respect that reason to a point, but there's not a, they cannot service all these cars all at once. Like I said before, they're gonna, they still need us independents to do the work. And like Dave says that he has to pay a licensing fee, just like I do. Every time we touch a vehicle, whatever manufacturer that is, we have to be certified in some way or form to work on. And we pay for that. We pay for those Ford certifications. We pay for those uh, GMC or Chevrolet or Dodge or Chrysler. We pay for those certifications. So whatever they're saying, if the question one passes the way it should, they're still gonna be making money from us. We're still gonna be buying parts for them. We're still going to need their services and their uh, subscriptions so that we could do the repairs. So the the ads that they're say, saying to you, um, if they have to see those kind of things, if they have to create those kind of ads, there's a reason, and it's not for you. So vote yes at question one. That's the only way you can do it. So I would I would ask you, Dave. Uh, I've I've had a chance to um, speak with the folks from both sides. And my understanding is, is that there isn't such a law on the books in most, in, in a lot of the states. Massachusetts may be the only state that has a right to repair law on the books and, and, and a push to do a second one, but where there's an agreements with other, that there are other, there are agreements in other states, but not like we have. H have you heard the same thing or, or, or do you have any knowledge to that this, maybe this could be the start of something where, this is passed in Massachusetts and it goes around the country? Well, it's, it's already started to go around the country and I don't have the information in front of me, but Senator Grassley from, I think, Iowa, there's already a, a push out in the Midwest for the same thing. It's called something different. It's called, uh, I forget the name of it, but they, they've already started the push. People are not sleeping at the switch on this thing. Um, basically the independence and, uh, even and the pot stores are behind this, and there's no question about it. If there's no aftermarket independent repairs, there's going to be no aftermarket market uh, to uh, to buy parts. So um, 
the manufacturer is trying to control the thing. So it's a monopoly and uh, monopolies don't generally work. If you notice, uh, uh, Google's getting sued pretty big for uh, having this monopoly and all the information that's going around with them. And uh, there's, there's so much control of the marketplace. I mean, look at the, look at the political thing about uh, Facebook controlling what, what you put up on Facebook and all the rest of it. So um, it's, it's, we're in different times now. And um, what you thought wasn't going to hurt you is going to hurt you. So you have to have the information. And if we can't access the information to fix your automobile, then you're going to have to go to the dealer. Um, it was funny. I was thinking about this. Like, so if you bought a refrigerator from GE and they told you the only person that could fix it would be GE. So there would be no Paul's um, appliance repair in, in Hanson. It, there's all these small businesses that, that do these things on a regular basis that come right to your house, service your car the, or service your refrigerator, whatever. And um, if it's totally controlled by the manufacturer, then a lot of people are going to be out of business and a lot of money is going to go to big um, conglomerates as opposed to the locals. You get people like Peter Brown that uh, donates money to all kinds of different things locally, Little League, Babe Ruth League, um, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, you, you could go on forever because Peter's a very generous person. And, um, not, you know, I say to people all the time, do you really think, how, what do you think town fair is going to give you? You know, you think town fair is going to give you money for your, uh, your, uh, boys and girls club or your lions club or your rotary club or any of those things that uh, are raising money for homeless people to, to have food. So if you don't support your small businesses, you're going to be in trouble. Um, and I think people realize it and, uh, you know, I think, I think we're going to win overwhelmingly. Uh, I think it's going to pass. We've got about a minute left here. Anything that we haven't touched upon, but it's kind of important to let the folks know before they start early voting, if they are deciding to early vote right now, or they are going to head to the polls on November 3rd, Peter. Just don't be afraid. Read the facts. Look at who's talking about it. And think about the local people, just like David said. You know, David is, has been embedded in Plymouth since I can remember. And just don't be scared. We're here to protect you with, as much as we can. Uh, we get the same information as the dealers. So vote yes on question one. Dave, what would you like to say to wrap this up? I guess the only thing is, uh, if you want the choice or where to get your automobile repaired, please vote question one. If you don't care about choice, well, you can do what you want. But I, don't, I can't see how anybody would vote the other way. I definitely want to thank you both for, for joining me and, and uh, discussing this. Um, I think we are, we are all invested in this one way or the other. I became invested because I had a vehicle that needed repair and um, my small shop couldn't repair it, uh, couldn't get the data. So I had to go to the dealership. I was charged a, a, you know, a, a fee to look at it and then told it was going to cost me nearly half the amount that it was going to cost. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the place that I bought the vehicle, um, offering, uh, you know, a, a lifetime, the, the lifetime that I was going to own the vehicle, um, a, um, an incentive by saying, Hey, we're not going to charge you as much to repair it or for parts. I probably would have sold the, the vehicle or, or done something foolish. Luckily I, I was, I had the information. And that's what's important is, is being informed. And, and I thank both of you for helping inform the folks before they head to the polls on this particular question. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin.